In this video, we're going to look at some solving basics for trig equations. And specifically, we'll look at cosine theta equals negative square root 2 over 2. Now, I like to have a plan of attack when solving. And for something that is in this format, I like to think which angle or angles have a cosine of negative square root 2 over 2. So as we work through this, you may find that there are a lot of similarities to actually finding or solving an exact value. We're just working in the other direction. And so let's take a look at how we'll do this. All right, step one, we'll do our analysis. We'll figure out which quadrants our angle or angles are going to be in. And we'll also determine our reference triangle because this will help us determine exactly what angle we're working with. And step two is all about just synthesizing that information from step one, putting it all together to state our answers. So let's do this. Cosine theta equals negative square root 2 over 2. We start by analyzing, and we're going to figure out which quadrants we should be working in. And this acronym, ASTC, think all students take classes. It's going to tell us which trig functions are positive in each quadrant. So let's go ahead and label the quadrants. We work our way around, starting in quadrant 1, A, S, T, C. And so a quick reminder of how this works, the A stands for all, all trig functions are positive in the first. In the quadrant, in quadrant two, the S tells us that sine and its reciprocal cosecant are the only positive ones. In quadrant three, it's tangent and cotangent that are positive. And in quadrant four, that C tells us cosine and its reciprocal secant are positive. So looking back to our problem, we see our cosine theta gives a negative value. So process of elimination, we can't be in quadrant one and we can't be in quadrant four because cosine's positive there. We want the quadrants where cosine is going to be negative. And so let's just sketch in angles in quadrant two and quadrant three. This is where we're working. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do, we're going to figure out which reference triangle we're working with. And I like to just do this in quadrant one um, so all the values are positive because we're going to synthesize in step two um, to make sure we have the correct angles. So one thing to remember, when we're working on the unit circle, the cosine of an angle is going to be the x coordinate. Okay, so we're looking for the triangle that has an x coordinate of root two over two. Um, a quick side note, if you aren't familiar with special right triangles and their properties and how they work on the unit circle, I'll post a link to a playlist on unit circle basics. So go to that playlist and check out. You'll see there are videos for each of the special right triangles, and that's a great thing to refresh before you really get into solving. Okay, so again, the cosine is the x coordinate on the unit circle. We want that x coordinate or the horizontal leg of our triangle to be that value square root 2 over 2. And hopefully you're thinking, oh, hey, that's the isosceles triangle when you see that square root 2 over 2 value where both legs are equal. Okay, But again, we're looking at the x coordinate where the cosine is square root 2 over 2. And this is from the 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. Okay, So our reference angles are going to be 45 degrees. We get that from our central angle right here. Most of the time when you're solving trig equations, you're going to be stating your answer in radians. So let's go ahead and adjust that. We know that 45 degrees is the same thing as pi over four radians. And so that angle is going to be key to determining how to name our angles in quadrants two and three. So our reference angles will both be pi over four. Okay, and remember reference angles, just the rotation from a terminal side of an angle to the x-axis. Okay, so in step two, we're going to actually name these angles. And we're first going to state them just, I call it on the unit circle. So on the interval from zero to two pi. And let's start with the angle in quadrant two. So we know that that angle would be drawn like this. And we know that if we rotated a half rotation, that would be pi. Or if we wanna use that common denominator, we had that denominator of four in our reference angle. So I like to write pi as 4 pi over 4. It's the same thing, just has a common denominator. And so for that angle in quadrant 2, we've rotated almost a half rotation around, but pi over 4 less than that. Remember, that reference angle is pi over 4. 
So we just need to subtract 4 pi over 4 minus pi over 4, and we know one of our angles is going to be 3 pi over 4. Again, that's the one in the second quadrant. All right, so now let's go ahead and determine that angle that's in quadrant 3. So this one should be even easier. We've already relabeled pi, that half rotation is 4 pi over 4. And to get to that angle in quadrant 3, three we rotate like this move it so we don't cover that reference angle. So we rotate to 4 pi over 4, but then we rotate 1 pi over 4 past that. So all we need to do is add those together. So 4 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4. Our angle in quadrant 3 is 5 pi over 4. Now you'll get to the point where you just know that those are the angles in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3 respectively that have that reference angle of pi over 4. Um, that's something that comes with practice and a good knowledge of your unit circle. Um, so you may already be there, but if not, that's how we can actually work through and determine each of these angles. So now one more thing before we go. Say we needed to find the solutions, but our question was find all solutions or solve this problem for all solutions. We would do this by writing two solution equations is what I like to call them. And there will be one for each of these angles that we named in the space above. So let's start with that quadrant two angle. You could substitute that back in to double check that that is a correct answer. Cosine of three pi over four is negative root two over two. So if three pi over four is an answer, all its coterminal angles must also be correct answers. Remember, a coterminal angle is simply an angle that shares the same terminal side. So that, that terminal side is in the same place. Um, so we want to say all of those answers as well, but we don't want to stand, sit here forever and list answers of angles forever and ever and ever. So we can write it in this clever little way. We can say theta equals three pi over four plus two pi K, where two pi is a full rotation, a full circle, and K is an integer. And depending on what integer you substitute in, you'll get a different angle, uh, a different coterminal angle to three pi over four. All right, so let's write our solutions equation now for our quadrant three angle. So it'll be almost the same, but we say theta is going to be five pi over four plus two pi k. So that essentially says five pi over four and all its coterminal angles. All right, hopefully this helped you have a plan of attack for solving a trig equation in this format. Um, I'll post links to more examples in the video description, so check those out as well, and thanks for watching.